Hey, if you are making a game in Unity, I have a great new shader that you can use for your project. The shader makes it really easy to add gradients to your UI elements, and you can also add rounded borders. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to import and set up the uh, component. It's really easy. It'll just take a few minutes. And um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started. And so if you're interested in, you know, having UI gradients or uh, rounded borders on your UI elements, then this video is for you. So here in the scene, we have a canvas and um, on that canvas, you can see that it's set to screen space overlay. And we're actually going to see a problem when doing the screen space overlay mode with this specific asset. So. So when you're uh, using, so for this shader, we use shader graph and that makes it really easy for you to extend. I'm actually gonna pop open the shader graph here so you can take a look at it. Um, and you can see it's pretty simple. And um, basically the only problem is, is that when you're using shader graph with UI elements, at least in Unity 2022.3, shader graph doesn't properly uh, cut or clip the um, alpha uh, on the corners. And so we're doing some corner blending here. And so what you're gonna need to do is the first thing that you'll need to do is make your canvas in the screen space camera mode. And you can see when we do that right away, the alpha starts working. So that's a little pro tip in general. Uh, if you do wanna make shader graphs for your UI elements, make sure that your canvas is in that screen space camera uh, mode so that everything works correctly. Now, I'm just going to open up this image really quick. You can see here that we have a UI gradient script. So that script is adding a material to the image component of our rect transform. And basically under the hood, we're just doing a little bit of cleanup and setup action when you add the script so I'm just going to start by removing the script and setting this material back to none. And you can see that it's just a basic image, a basic rec transform image. And uh, it's, there's nothing funny happening here. And it has a width, a height, and a position, right? And um, now all you're going to have to do to set up the UI uh, gradient system here is you're just going to go add component. And then we're going to go to, I believe, Oka software. And then if we go down to uh, UI gradient, which is not here, if we go to, let's just go ahead and search for it, UI gradient. So if we go ahead and pull that up, you can see that uh, we just get this, you know, small error here, nothing to worry about. And uh, that's just because this gradient wasn't set up initially but we can go ahead and set something up here now. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see that the gradient starts working right away. Now, um, there are a couple cool things that have just happened. We've set up a gradient under the hood. We create a gradient texture, uh, an actual texture that we pass to the shader. And uh, we automatically assign that material to your image. And um, you can have some settings here, so you can change the direction of the gradient. Uh, these directions are basically pulled from the CSS spec. So if you are a web developer, this will feel pretty comfortable to you. And you can do top, top right, right, bottom right, bottom, and so on. You can also adjust the wrap mode. Now, the wrap mode, you can see, doesn't nothing really happens if I change the wrap mode from clamp to repeat here, but it, you will see an effect when you start adjusting the scale. So if we bring the scale in, let's just say that we have three, you can see that that gradient gets really tight. Now that's happening because we're scaling that gradient along the axis. And you can see that that works in any direction. Okay. Now, um, if we change the wrap mode from clamp to repeat, 
you can see that we're now repeating that gradient. Now, this obviously looks pretty weird. You probably wouldn't want a repeat mode, but you might want a mirror mode. And that just mirrors the texture instead of repeating it. So you can see here, this white sort of flips the next one, and then it mirrors it. So that's something nice that you can do with the scale option. You can also translate the position like so. And that makes a really interesting or maybe cool loading effect, uh, especially if you change the height of the element to something pretty, maybe not that narrow, but something a bit narrow. It can make something pretty interesting. This also works with alpha, like what we saw before. So let's go ahead and change this. We'll make that white and then we'll change this one to alpha. And then if we translate this across that way, you can see it makes this kind of interesting loading sort of effect. So those are just a few of the sort of things that you can do. You can see that there's a little bit of an issue over here. And so that's why in general, you might wanna keep this on clamp mode where that issue doesn't occur. Um, but if you are gonna be panning it, right, you'll wanna you know, maybe go ahead and turn it onto that repeat mode. Um, so let's kind of just fix this gradient a little bit and make this a bit bigger. The next thing I'm going to show you is the rounded borders piece. So um, basically you'll just go ahead and set your gradients. We'll do something kind of blue here and then a little bit of a brighter blue at the bottom. Let's do something like that and then something like this. I like that vibrant blue there. And then we'll change the blend to perceptual. And then we'll change this to top right. So now if you want to add a border, sort of not border, like a, a rounded corners in CSS, it's called border radius, that's why. But um, you can configure this radius here and it will add this seamless sort of border on all sides. So you can have a really nice pill shaped uh, button if you'd like to have uh, something like that. And uh, you can also rotate the direction of the, uh, the gradient. Now, one thing that uh, you'll notice is that the gradient actually performs kind of correctly with respect to corners. Um, normally, if you just rotate that gradient around, the gradient will end too early when it's looking into the corners. Um, and so we use some little special shader magic to make sure that the gradient doesn't and too early when going into the corners. And that's pretty much it for the UI gradient. It's pretty easy to use, and you can just go ahead and do that add component UI gradient thing, and that'll get you set up. So uh, the way that you'll download this is on the Oka software website. I'll include a link in the description below so you can check it out and give it a download. Uh, on Oka software, we have a ton of other assets as well. I think they're all really great. And if you're making a game for Unity, uh, you'll be able to make a much better game much more quickly by taking advantage of our assets. And you can get everything uh, just for you know a small monthly uh, subscription. So we're really excited about that. And uh, you don't even have to commit upfront, which is something that we think is really important. And so you can do a free trial to see if everything works for your project. Uh, it's really important to me that that anything that you use, you're not paying for it up front. You're able to check it out, see if it works. And then if it works for your project, you can then use it and uh, pay that monthly subscription. But um, yeah, so go ahead and check it out. I'll include a link in the description below. And I hope you liked this video and found it informative. And uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.